I have decided to try and run a fast 5K. For me, that means under 19 minutes. I haven't run a fast 5K since the 1st of January this year. I ran a 1938, and because of lockdown, I haven't really run anything slightly competitive since. Most of my running has just been plodding around with the dogs. In addition to that, I'm not really the right sort of person to run a 19 minute 5k anyway. I'm 6 foot 6, 46 years of age, 230 pounds. Now that adds up to, oh, you'll be fast. On top of all of that, I'm currently undergoing what I'm calling a carbohydrate refeed, but basically consists of three weeks of eating 10,000 calories of cookies a day. So that is against. However, I am highly confident because stacked four is the most ridiculous looking shoe I think I've ever seen. The Nike Zoom Vaporfly Next Percent Bloody Bloody Blah. Uh, the name is only dwarfed in size by the huge heel on the thing. It is nuts, but apparently they're fast. Now, I am a barefoot runner, and not literally a barefoot runner. I am a minimalist runner, I guess would be the term. Let me explain why. When I was 36, 37, so nine years ago, I guess, I started running and everything hurt. Toes, ankles, Achilles, shins, uh, calves, knees, hamstrings, quads, hips. You get the idea. I was at the time 330 pounds. I thought, I'm just too heavy to run. And then I read the book Born to Run and I thought, hang on a minute, maybe there's something in this. And I bought myself a pair of five fingers and almost immediately the pain went away. And I've been very, very lucky, touch wood, since. I've had no running injuries, no running pain at all, despite getting quicker and quicker and running further and further. So I am very much in favor of minimalist. In fact, all my shoes, let me show you. My vibrant five fingers. I still wear these for summer runs that are not particularly long. They are just a fun thing to run in. When I say a minimalist shoe, it doesn't necessarily mean there has to not be a lot of the shoe. The idea is that it has minimal impact on the footwork in the way it is supposed to. Consequently, I wear Ultras a lot. These are my 1v3s. They have zero drop between the heel and the forefoot and they have a big wide toe box. They interfere with the natural working of the foot very, very little. My Ultra Lone Peaks are good for running up the side of mountains. My Ultra Paradigms are great for cushioned runs for recovery, but still zero drop between heel and toe. The Escalante Ultras are great for going incredibly fast because they are incredibly light, not a lot to those at all. Even my obstacle course racing shoes are Innovate Mud Claws with a very low drop between heel and toe. Mud Claws when it is really muddy and different Innovates when it's slightly less muddy and back to ultras for going up more mountains and more innovates for when I want more green. What's also interesting is that these are my Jordan 34s for basketball. I've always been a size 10 in a Nike basketball shoe. When I got these recently, I had to go to an 11 and remove the insole because in the years that I've been running in wide toe box trainers, my foot has got broader, wider, stronger and now no longer fits into a size 10 Nike basketball shoe. Good for jumping. And now these, and just look at the difference in the heel between the Escalante Racers and the Zoom. Absolutely mad. Okay, the shoes are on and they feel very, very weird. It's like walking on water balloons with no stability whatsoever. Uh, side to side movement feels like they could roll my ankle at any moment so i'm putting that to one side mentally i've written down the plan if i run at a three minute 40 per kilometer pace that would give me an 18 minute 25k so way inside where i need to be so 
plenty quick enough, but it will also give me a 5 minute 54 1 mile, which is 1.6 kilometers. So if I can run 1.6 kilometers in 5 minutes 54, I will be going at a pace that is way inside sub 19 minute 5k. If I finish that one kilometer feeling fresh and fast because of my new shoes, I know I could then carry on and do at least 5k in an equally impressive state. Or they'll make no difference whatsoever and it will be 240 pounds down the drain. Do you think you can keep up? Yeah. Watch me warm up. I'm going to go over those numbers again because they were confusing me a little bit. So my current 5k personal best is a 19 minute 38. That is the equivalent of running a 3 minute 55 per kilometer pace. Done on New Year's Day after a year of solid training. I want to do in the coming weeks under 19 minutes. To do that I would need to be running at a 3 minute 48 per kilometer pace. So the plan here was to run 1.6 kilometers because that's one mile and to do it in a three minute 40 per kilometer pace for three reasons firstly three minute 40 per kilometer pace is underneath the three minute 48 per kilometer pace that i need to do my sub 19 so it's quick enough secondly i've never run a mile and been timed I have no idea what a fast mile for me is supposed to look like. I know that the famous one is under four. I'm going to try and go under six minutes. That would be interesting to see if I could do that. And thirdly, the whole thing needs to finish relatively fresh. If I complete 1.6 kilometers and I'm exhausted, then it is no indication that I'm going to be able to continue that pace and do a full 5K. So it's not going to be my flat out mile. I accept that. It's not going to be my flat out 1K. The idea is that I run it at the right pace. That means when I finish, I feel like I could carry on. They feel very, very strange indeed. Like I'm walking on giant pillows or something. Not what I'm used to at all. We're going to go for it. We're going to go for 1.6 kilometers in under five minutes or six minutes? Five. Under six minutes at a three minute 40 per kilometer pace. And I am off. Now, while that plays up there and conspiracy theorists put down your stopwatches, it's not the whole run. I'm going to edit it for time. I'll explain how long I took in due course. Let me just explain why. As somebody who credits his running and foot health down to using stuff like this for years, I'm even bothering to prat about in something like this. And the answer is pretty simple because although I'm a huge fan of using the body the way I believe it's supposed to be used, the way I believe it's evolved to be used, hence I do trail runs and obstacle course races, I do like a gadget. And this is about as gadgety as it comes. I'm not averse to incorporating some cool technology into my health and fitness. I'm not running around like a caveman out there. I've got my Garmin on, my heart rate monitor, my Beats headphones, my Oakleys. A little bit of tech is fine, and these are a little bit of tech. If you read the Nike website, which tells you all about them, you think you're buying a Tesla. There's a lot of very clever stuff going on inside the shoe. Suffice to say, the majority of marathon top places and wins and records of late have come from either this shoe or its predecessor or versions of them. I just fancy giving my feet a little treat. I'm not going to run in something that is how best to describe it. Something that influences the way my foot works to this extent on a regular basis. The majority, vast majority of my running is always going to be done in minimalist shoes that let my foot work as it's supposed to. But every now and again, to give it a little treat and see what I can do, that doesn't seem such a bad thing. It's kind of like having a burger once a month. This is a foot burger. Nike, you're welcome to that if you want it. Um, so yeah. The plan is just to see, with this on my foot, what's all the fuss about. Oh. Ah. Okay, I feel right. That is cool. Like I feel I can, I feel I can rumble. 
Okay, let me save that and then we jog home. Let's go back where we came. Yeah, that was quick. Yeah, let's go. Just over a kilometre to home, so just make sure that wasn't a slightly fluky, um, what would you call it if the shoes were doing all the work in my head? Cheating. It's not cheating, it's my brain being more powerful than my muscles. The benefit could have been psychosomatic. So now that I've calmed down from the excitement of wearing them, we're going to run another kilometre home. Oh! Fastest mile, it says. Okay, the good, the bad, and the stats. I've got nothing good to say about them at the moment. Let's do the bad first of all. It feels like I'm running on a airbag uh, strapped to the bottom of my foot uh, and it feels about as stable as such. I'm sure on a track or sticking to the road it's not too bad. Um, you certainly couldn't run off-road in them and by off-road I mean even a park run or something and I get that's not what they're designed for but uh, my 5k's and normally done at park runs I wouldn't wear these on my local park run and it's a pretty flat park run on the odd occasion when i had to change from pavement to road it felt like it would be very easy to roll over that that back end is just so narrow and squishy so not particularly stable not what it's for i know maybe it's my feet that are just used to a much more um not their shoe it, it feels hard work to run in and it, that's going to sound odd when we look at the times but it feels like i'm running in sand or wet ground it just feels like i'm kind of bogging down with every step and it's almost feels draining um like you'd expect it to feel if you're running in sand or wet ground it just feels squishy and this could be my fault but i don't think i had enough tightness around the ankle in fact i didn't use the extra hole and do the heel lock grip on the laces which it really does need because I could feel my heel rolling actually not rolling over it was more as a sort of sliding off the side of the um the bouncy castle that is the heel on this thing so I need much more lockdown on the heel but again that's not the fault of the shoe that's probably my fault uh other than that <laughs> bits of them are flaking off already they aren't going to last very long Again, not what they're for. So, not particularly comfortable, not a particularly fun thing to run in, uh, doesn't feel particularly stable, so not an awful lot in its favour. <laughs> but the times. Just to add to the list of things earlier that I reeled off as to why I shouldn't be particularly fast, today, even less so, I did a 1500 watts output on the bike challenge earlier, which blasted my legs. I had lunch just over an hour ago I would never normally run uh, this close to eating there was something else the bike lunch the bike lunch I can't remember I didn't really warm up properly either I just sort of jogged down there so I shouldn't have been expecting too much but I ran the mile 1.6 kilometers in 5.32 I felt okay at the end of it if I'd only been doing a mile, I could have gone quicker. Uh, I, could, I could probably go into five minutes for the mile, I'd have thought. Um, that's a, another challenge for another day. So 1.6 kilometers, a mile, five, point, uh, five minutes, 32 seconds. And then more relevant for the 5K, I went through the first kilometer in three minutes, 23 
and I felt that I'd gone off quite quickly, as I always do. But normally for me, going off quite quick, I'll look at my watch and it will show a 3.43 pace or 3.45 pace or something, and I'll think, oh, hang on, slow down a bit. I've never seen a 3.23 ever. And although I was going off quick, I wasn't out of control. I, I noticed it fairly early into that first kilometer and, and backed off a bit. No point doing a crazy fast kilometer that I wouldn't be able to maintain in any way. So 3.23, yeah, that's fast for me. 3.23 times five, let's just, let's just play with that. I don't know how quick that is, I'll put it up. That's a fast 5K if I could maintain that. There's no way on earth I'd maintain that. What I should be doing is 3.40s, I ran the second kilometer, again, without much of a break, just turned around and ran back again. And I ran that kilometer in, I aimed for 340, and I think it was pretty spot on, 343. And again, felt pretty okay at the end of it. I could certainly have carried on. I think sub 19 minutes for a 5K is perfectly achievable. My plan is to train for the next three weeks, and that's it, three weeks. If I'm feeling good, stick these back on, prepare properly, and run under 19 minutes. That'd be quite an achievement for me. And while I'm at it, I'll go and bang out a sub five minute mile, because I wanna get my 240 pounds worth. <sighs> 240 pounds, it's insane. Nuts.